Today we're covering a Patreon request, which I, I do do those, by the way, to remind you guys. The patron who requested has since moved on from being one of my patrons, and frankly, I don't blame them. Regardless of my reasons, this video took way too long to make. That is not something I intend to let happen again, if I get any further requests in the future. And uh, if they're still around, I hope they enjoy the video. Today we're talking about a show called Fillmore, which aired in two 13-episode seasons back in 2003 and 2004. It's a show that they described as having been unfairly treated. It wasn't very well advertised. Not many people tend to remember it. And looking into it, it seems like that's absolutely true. It's not just something that seemed to be true from the perspective of the patron who requested this video. In fact, I have a vague recollection of seeing little bits of this show whether they be advertisements or scenes online, I don't think I ever actually saw it on television. Which is a real shame, because this show is interesting. It was created by Scott Gimple. Yes, that Scott Gimple. And is, at its core, a child-friendly parody of police procedurals, particularly the older style that you might have seen in the 70s, rather than something more modern like a law and order or something. Though, frankly, the tropes aren't that different. In fact, the show is a cult hit that had many adult fans even at the time, since parents could watch the show with their kids and enjoy the same kinds of tropes that they would see in their favorite police shows. Set at X Middle School in Minnesota, the main characters, Fillmore and Ingrid, tended to deal with things like theft of scooters, smuggling of tartar sauce, and, in the case of the episode we're talking about today, counterfeiting of trading cards. In fact, the plot of this episode is the counterfeiting of baseball cards, specifically. Obviously standing in for counterfeiting money. Everything in this, in fact, stands in for something that you would see in a detective show. Fillmore and Ingrid work for the safety patrol at their school, rather than being police officers working at a police department. The villain of this episode, immune to all but justice, is the son of a Canadian diplomat, rather than being a diplomat himself, and therefore has a form of diplomatic immunity where the school's safety patrol isn't allowed to harass him. And just like you might see in one of these shows, an old friend and old flame of Fillmore is working with the staff that surrounds this kid. He is supposedly a philanthropist back home. And she, like Fillmore himself, used to be a juvenile delinquent, and has since reformed, inspired to do so by the goodwill of this character. But despite the fact that the character has diplomatic immunity and a good public image, Fillmore is a good enough detective that he and his partner Ingrid are able to pick up on the fact that something shady is going on, and follow a series of very well laid out clues to what the scheme is, and then where it's being carried out so that they can take the initiative and stop further counterfeit cards from being made, even going against the wishes of their quote-unquote captain to do so. As far as the story itself and the tropes that it employs, it feels very straightforward to anyone who's ever seen a detective show before. And while I admit it does perpetuate some police show tropes that I'm not super happy with these days, copaganda is a real problem in the United States especially. These characters are not cops, so they don't walk around carrying guns and falsely imprisoning people. And the application of those tropes in a kid's show, especially one with a pretty striking design and a lot of style, goes a long way towards giving this show a very unique identity. I've never really seen anything like this before. I will say that while I think the designs of the characters and the environments are pretty cool, I do find the very thick line work on characters who have no shading on them whatsoever to be a little off-putting, it took me a little while to get used to it, but once I did, I didn't really have an issue looking at this anymore. And the character designs are all really strong. I really like the design of the Ingrid character in particular. This episode also fit many of the common events that you would see in a 40-minute police procedural in a 20-minute show, giving it a really fast pace, and yet it didn't feel like anything was really watered down. It employed everything from brief glances between the characters, to mood and music, to move the plot along in ways that made sense, logically, without having to be bogged down by a lot of exposition. Couple that with a pretty all-star voice cast, and you have a show that I'm definitely going to revisit in the future. So if anyone would like to see me talk about any more specific episodes of this show, please let me know. Seriously. 
I don't really have much more to say about it today. Because this is a mystery, I don't want to get into the specifics of it. Even if it isn't, like, the most mind-blowing mystery of all time, following the clues along with the characters was one of the joys of watching this episode for me. And this episode does have a twist ending that was pretty cool, frankly. I kind of saw it coming, but only because I've been exposed to these tropes so much in my life. Also, briefly, in terms of this episode in particular, since I've kind of been talking very generally about the show so far, I don't know how common this is for the rest of the show yet, but I really liked how the action scenes were handled almost like puzzles here. There's a lot of chases in this, and every single one of them involves Fillmore and or Ingrid using some degree of intellectual problem solving to get the best of their quarry, even if just briefly. I also particularly liked how, even though the going against regulation to apprehend the subject trope is a thing in police procedurals that I don't like all the time, Fillmore and Ingrid were willing to risk their position on the safety patrol to bring justice to someone who was otherwise above the law. Eventually, more using pressure to get him to stop doing immoral things rather than any sort of force. It really spoke to the integrity of the characters, and overall I thought it was um, pretty well done. Yeah, seriously, looking at a lot of the Episode summaries on the Wikipedia page for the show, a lot of the crimes that are parodied in these episodes are pretty heavy. I'm definitely going to watch more episodes of this show just to see how it deals with tackling some of these in a kid-friendly, cartoony kind of way. Which does bring us to the last thing I do want to talk about for the show. It is cartoony. It is a cartoon that also deals in cartoony tropes. The villain of this episode was, as I mentioned before, the son of a diplomat, particularly a Canadian diplomat. And so everything about his public image was Canadian. It was maple syrup and the Canadian flag. And that's such a cartoony thing. And yet you have these incredibly serious characters dealing with this guy in the foreground entirely seriously, entirely sternly, with all this silly stuff happening around them. It made the show funny in a very unique kind of way. Oh, also the show has a narrator who narrates the titles of the three acts of the show, because it is broken into a three-act structure. And it's Don LaFontaine, the in-a-world guy. It's very cool, is my point. This is a cool show, and I wish it had seen more publicity back in the day, because I definitely would have watched it. Unfortunately, I can't seem to find a very high-quality rendition of this show anywhere, but it does seem like most, if not all, of the episodes are available on YouTube. I don't know if they'll remain that way forever, because YouTube Content ID is a flippant mistress, but, I mean, if, if what you saw here interested you, I recommend finding it and checking it out. Like I mentioned, I definitely will be. Overall, I found my experience with Fillmore to be very satisfying, and I think you will too. As per usual, though, guys, I'd like to know what did you think of this episode of Fillmore, or about the show in general, if you have seen either of them. I guess if you've seen the show, you've probably seen this episode, too. You get what I'm saying. Let's get discussion going in the comments section down below. And while you're down there, you might as well like the video and subscribe if you haven't. You can also check out the video description, where I have a link to where you can purchase the first three books in my novel series, all of which are currently up for purchase. But either way... This has been AJ22, and I will talk to you guys later.